Father, have mercy upon us. Transform our life in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome you, the teacher. Teach us. Glorify the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome again, Uncle uh, Joseph. <laughs> Okay, so have you guys shared on Facebook, on WhatsApp? Uh, there are a lot of good news in the house, but I'm not going to be sharing them until Friday. And some of them are, have even caused some holy commotion or holy trouble, but you're going to be hearing about them. But so much good news with a number of people. And it's, the summer is really looking good with a lot of good opportunities being landed. Glory to Jesus! Glory to Jesus! Glory to Jesus! And I know... It's a week of miracles. Everywhere. You will have yours. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we've been talking about the gift of the blessings. Uh, the blessing and righteousness. And I want to just comb everything together. Because it's so important that we do a closing to it. So that you can press. And I believe God will be able to get about 30 minutes to just press and pray. Because you give me Psalm 24. Until the blessing of the Lord rests on a man, the struggle continues. And the most blessed financially, and the most blessed when it comes to the issue of wisdom in the, New, in the Old Testament, it's apt is to say that. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. In other words, it was saying, he is also the one who said the way of the transgressors is hard. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, he said, I think from verse 15, he says, if the axe be blunt, it requires more energy and wisdom is profitable to direct In other words, he was saying that if the life of a man is hard, check about the blessing factor. Stop advancing reasons for sorrows and difficulties of life. Because the more you advance reasons for them, the more they multiply. And they may be with you till you die. They may even actually suffocate you. Stop advancing reasons for marital conflict. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Stop advancing reasons for retardation of life, retrogression of life. Stop advancing reasons for a life of turmoil, of toiling, and of tumult, tumultuous, toiling, life, troubles of life, or troubled life. Because the blessing factor produces riches, spiritual and physical alike, and removes sorrow. So blessing is the riches producing, sorrow removing factor of God. In the life of a man. And of serious importance is the fact that when the blessing of the Lord is released on a man, it means God's defined resources and forces are deployed to change the man's earthly realities. I was just talking to Dr. Ebuwa over there. He's a frontline surgeon from Nigeria. But from the moment you leave the source of Nigeria, wherever you are, stay there with you. Except by the grace of God. 
I was telling my daughter, Ibuku, there are a number of master's degree information technology graduates driving taxis on the taxi rack over there in Galway. Some of them study law. I've actually met doctors who had become non-entity over here. Nobody recognized them for nothing. And in less than three months of him being here, what has happened to him is too huge. If you want to work in the air sector, you go and work as a care worker, caregiver. They don't care whether you are a medical, medical doctor in Nigeria means nothing here. He's been put in the same line where he was. The only factor that can maintain your level from one nation to another or take you higher is just the blessing of the Lord. They went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another. The Lord did not allow them, anybody to do them evil. He rebuked kings on their behalf, saying, touch no my anointed and do my prophet no harm. The anointing is an offspring. The power of God is an offspring of the blessing. Nobody can be anointed except you are blessed. <laughs> it is the blessing of God that produced that spiritual richness called the anointing. That's where I was reading to you in Luke chapter 24 where Jesus lifted up his hands to heaven. As he wanted to depart. And the Bible says he blessed them. Jesus blessed the disciples. And he told them go and wait for the promise of my father. I read it on Sunday. Go and wait for the promise of my father. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. Because he had taught them for three and a half years. They have understood what he was saying. They, they, have, they have fulfilled the law of righteousness. So he blessed them and I say, the anointing is coming. Few days later, the Holy Ghost came. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that is the... They are, those are the forces of heaven that go to work to change your earthly reality. They are the one lift up your head so you get and you leave them the everlasting door that the king of glory might come in. If the blessing doesn't come on this man, it can't challenge powers. Blessing is God declaring his stance and say, For Reuben, this is what I've declared. And once that is released, it's irrevocable. The reason why many people suffer on that is because they don't carry the blessing of the Lord. One day God told me, <laughs> I was just troubled. Oh, how will people come to church? How will people this? God said, there is nothing you can do for a church that is my own. There are churches that are not churches of God. They are synagogue of Satan or so-so, so-so, so-so interactive centers. Jesus talked about it. He talked about seven churches from Revelation chapter. Don't just go to churches. Don't just say I attend a church here. There are synagogues of Satan. There was even one that was being led between Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Seven churches. As an example of all the churches that, 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 that existed on that, that time. All of them are around the same axis in Turkey, which is Ephesus. Asia Minor, that time. The church of Ephesus, the church of uh, uh, Laodicea, Smyrna, um, Philadelphia. Uh, what, are those, what are the names? Pergam and Sardis. Which other one? Hmm? Theatira. They are around the same place. Only two Jesus found Noma. The rest... We are not just abnormal. One of them was being led by a witch. Who was a prophetess and a teacher. And nobody could know. He was feeding them with both the word of God. And sex in the night. He was giving them wine of adultery. Food mingled. That's the reason why you see a lot of young girls today. That say they want to do ministry. They are just interested in advertising breast. You see the way they will pop their voice. God is so good in the church today. It's just grace and grace and fabulous grace. His breast they want people to see. They don't know the meaning of meaning. That's the reason why it doesn't take more than three years before several people have slept with them. You just discover their Facebook is shut down. Come and ask the reason why some of us have been in the ministry for 31 years and we have not died.
and we will tell you the beast we are fought with and that we are still fighting with. I was talking with my son today, um, O'Shane, and I said before, I didn't know the extent of hatred that people had for me in this nation and in this city. I didn't know. So I will see people, I'll just be laughing, I'll just be, I will be shouting even in Lydia and everywhere until I see that problem began to start and I saw what everybody was saying. Just because I stand for, it's, it's not too much righteousness, just little. <laughs> you have not even really stood though. I've not really stood. I didn't ask you to throw away your television like Pastor Kumu. You had not, had not, I've not even touched it. <laughs> even me, I, I, I still have style on my hair. <laughs> Only that my mouth is sharp on the issue of heaven. And you cannot sleep with each other around me. Whether it's a pastor that sleeps with church members or church members that sleep with pastor, everybody's going to hear it. And you can't do unnecessary dressing around me where you are wrapping bum bum and wrapping breast. I feel irritated, Neil. I just feel irritated. I only get attracted to lawyers, to doctors, when they dress well and I go. Anytime I go to Dublin and I see lawyers and the way they dress, my head will just stand up. That's where I lose my holiness. But when I'm in the midst of people who just dress anyhow, I feel irritated. Because there's no reason for anybody to be advertising themselves if you are of quality. There's no reason. There's no reason to advertise. Oh, what am I preaching? Go back, Pastor. So the blessing is God declaring his stance over a man, over a situation. So I was, I was just, I was just disturbed. Well, God told me. I was just telling you that there are many different kind of churches. <laughs> Jesus called one of those seven churches, he called them synagogue of Satan. Called them synagogue of Satan. You've got to be careful where you go. You've got to be careful what is happening there. Look for three things and they are very important anywhere you turn to. There are many churches of God in the land of the living. They exist in Galway, they exist in Ireland, they exist everywhere. But three things to look for. Number one, that they are genuinely born again. Don't say everybody is born again. Don't accept it from it because everybody is not born again. Number two, they fear God. You see them confessing their sin. They are not saying, well, everybody sins and God is just the one who forgives us. That's not confession of sin. That's patronizing sins. Everybody doesn't sin. Otherwise, nobody will be in heaven. And we are not, we are not going to go to heaven unintentionally. There is nobody who will meet themselves in heaven who, are not, who we did not intend and walk towards it. You can't meet yourself in heaven unintentionally. You can meet yourself in hell unintentionally. Just like you can never succeed by accident. Even people who really want to succeed have not succeeded. So it's you, you that are not looking for accident. <laughs> you can't succeed by accident. Even if you win lotto, the lotto goes away. In this country, from people who won 120 million, they finished it. But somebody has started his life with 1,000 euro and had great intention to be successful. They succeeded. You can't succeed without intention. There is no way you can succeed unintentionally. Say one team will now come and beat Barcelona. They are training every day. When the Nigerian national team come and play against Barcelona, you win Barcelona. Do you know how much they used to assemble Barcelona? <laughs> All Nigerian team members just want to take the set of the Barcelona players. They are waiting for the end of the game whistle. Pair, they just say, Messi. <laughs> the last time they play against one club like that, Philippe George, one of our coaches, was begging one of the players for a set. It's not up to three months ago. They beat us. He was still begging them, can I get a set? <laughs> Number two is that they fear God. Number three is that they are sacrificially committed to Christ. You know, you see them coming to the church, whether it's snowing or it's raining. 
Not only that, they are doing everything. That, there is no way you can serve Christ without bleeding. It's not Christ you are serving. You are serving flesh. You are serving self. Because anybody who follows him must deny themselves and carry their cross on a daily basis. That's what he said. Every time they say, let us come and fast, they say, Pastor, I know you said about fasting, but God understands me, and I do tea fasting. <laughs> I say, what is the meaning of tea fasting? He said, I like uh, about seven cups a day, <laughs> between 9 a.m. and 12, so that I break my fast at 12, and then you have taken <laughs> seven cups of tea. And this tea is rich with milk. <laughs> Evaporated, not fresh. Evaporated, make it thick. <laughs> My wife said condensed. <laughs> condensed me. And you see that those three things are very important. And you see them doing it, doing it consistently and insistently. Consistency means that they are doing it every time. Insistently means that even when it is difficult for them to do it, they insist on doing it. It's the same thing that applies to anybody you want to marry. Don't come and be telling me like, my daughter, yeah, immediately anybody is doing good, the, the person is already a good person. I say, it takes a deeper insight into a person's life to know whether, it's not you do good for three months, you are good. You have not started Christianity if you have not stood consistently for one year in your faith without falling back. You just make mouth for two months. The next three months, you say, I'm tired of my life and my destiny. You, have no, you, don't, you don't know that so many of us also are tired. Judges 8.4 Faint yet pursuing. The army of Gideon. Faint yet pursuing. You think we are not tired? We are tired. We, we go and refire. You think you are the only one who doesn't want to come to church after some time? <laughs> many times. Many times that I'm speaking to my legs, you will go to church in the name of Jesus. Stand up legs, you will go to church. David will say, why are you cast down on my soul? Put your trust in God. Why are you cast down? Say, come on! Get back to the place of trust. So, but when it comes to the church of God, God now told me, I am the one who brings people. And it is the people that have released that will come. And he now told me, if today I release a sizable person of soul to you from heaven, 3,000 people, you count the number of the member of the church, whether Tuesday service or whatever, there will be 3,000. There may be more, but there won't be less. That is when God declares his stance. God and the devil don't fight. God doesn't, the devil, God will be fighting who he creates. He's like, say me, I'm fighting answer and Ebenezer. No. God allows the devil to just be running around just like cancer and Ebenezer can be running around, running around, running around. All of a sudden I just say, okay guys, wear your shoes, let go. I've declared my stance. Go is go. There's nothing like I want to stay with who? To do what? God just comes and just declares, this is my only begotten son in woman when please. The devil say, yes sir. It's yes sir. Who is it that says it and it comes to pass and then the Lord commands it? When he has commanded, we talk about the commanded blessing. One person wanted to curse the children of Israel. He said, I cannot curse them no matter what. He said, because I've been commanded to bless. This is a great curser. That if he cursed anybody, their life will never be normal. Curses are real. Curses are real. Curses are real. Don't be transgressing against God unnecessarily. Whatever he asks you to do, do. The opposite of what he asks you to do is causes. Don't be transgressing your parent unnecessarily. Whatever is due to them, give it to them. Honor. Give it to them. Don't let the heavens over you be sealed. The Bible clearly says it. Don't be stupid. Don't unnecessarily join forces to kick against a pastor. This morning, I withdrew my blessing over all the people that I taught. Who, has, who stand against me to be causing me, they will return back to where they used to be and worse. This morning, I, re I, re I, re I remove my blessing. Yes. Is that tangible? 
If we hand time to the house of peace, you say peace be unto you. Jesus said, if there's no child of peace, they say remove you your peace. You can take peace. Is that powerful? Young man, are you is everything okay with your destiny? Sit down very well. Please let me keep an eye. If you enter into a place they say they don't want peace, Jesus said, Take your peace and go. You can take it. It's good everybody goes back to where I used to meet them. They can now be battling with all the demons that I cast out. I, they are back there. God just declares his stance and just said, This is what I want to do. The devil cannot tamper with it. That is the release of the blessing of God. And when that happens, life begins to make ways for you. Life begins to make room for you. Causes are real. Don't play around them. Causes are real. Don't play around them. Causes are real. Don't play around them. The most dangerous substance on earth is not even fire. Because from fire, you'll be hearing the cracking of fire. As it's burning something, you can run. It's water. If fire was to be at the back of my house, like the beach at the back of my house, every, they would have ever quoted us a long time. Because it would be born in the But there is a beach at the back of my house We're playing with tsunami. <laughs> and it's quiet. And when water wants to kill, he actually even kills very quietly. Somebody just enter. You are not the one badly until you jump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but fire will be burning. Everybody will make, hey, oh, help me, oh, help me. What how do you say help me inside water? It just enter the nose, enter the eyes, everything just calm down very peacefully. Be careful with what is gentle. God is gentle. Your parents probably also your parents. They look very gentle. Pastors also, normally pastors are supposed to be like lamp. But don't forget, Jesus also said woe unto somebody. Woe. All of those people he said woe to, I don't think they ever got born again. He said it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment and for them. He has declared it. Because most of his miracles were performed there, yet they didn't believe. <laughs> Maybe they were sitting down castigating him. They say, stupid fellow. Uh, what is he saying, sir? We knew when he was growing up here. And he said, it would be more tolerable. He made an example of them. He was cursing them. It's in the Bible. In case you say Jesus only blessed. I don't know what Bible you are reading. Don't push the dial. Don't push a particular button where it turns back. In relating with God, table your, your matter in a very wise way. Father, this is what I'm feeling. There's a difference between asking question and questioning. There's a difference between tabling what is giving you concern and become a child that they are concerned about, that they have concern over. Your parent also. There's a way to talk to them. Very important. There's a way to go about it. God has actually made life in such a way that you cannot be independent. You are, you are always dependent on certain people for your life to be alright. Whether you like it or not, it is the truth. You can't just talk to your parents anyhow you like. You won't have a future. The future will have disappeared before you get there. I'm telling you. It will have disappeared before you get there. He said, so that it may be well with you and your day may be long gone out. In, in, in joy and in play, you can argue with your parents. You are playing together. Not that you are fighting them as if enemy to enemy that. You do not stand a chance 
to win over them. So you've got to be careful. And if you have done anything, that doesn't also mean you should become a dummy. Because they know how to use that clause. I know your father and your mother. They may maybe where is your now. They, they are always quoting it. <laughs> and the pastors are always threatened. I will curse you. No, you can't. A curse, costless, and not come. I am one of those smart fighters or not. I fight very smartly. Sometimes I send money before I start fight. <laughs> I say, hello, mom. I just sent you the money. They say, you pray, pray, pray. I say, so why are you doing this? Ah, I say, he will call me my husband. He calls me my, my mom calls me my husband. My husband is not like that. Ah, he cannot be, I've sent money <laughs> to change the course of the judgment. <laughs> if I do my fight. And I say, I'm not going to talk to you. You say, ah, you cannot do that. Don't do it. <laughs> But some of you don't have money, you don't have anything, and yet you stay fine to your parents. Are you normal? What will you use to appease them? They are still the one giving you money. You're not normal. Stupid foolishness. Send money or send your first salary home. And I say, Mom, let's talk. I don't like the way anytime you are talking to me, the way you are raising your voice like that, it makes me go gaga. And mom now say, ah, what do you mean? I'm your mom. Say, mom, don't forget, I just sent my salary. (laughs) And I say, it's, I'll be well with you. I think I inherited this thing from my mother. The way I'm talking is not actually good. I'm going to change. Thank you, my daughter. But you don't have money, you don't have anything, and you are raising your voice against your mom. Who do you think you are? There's a way you put some things down in the church. You now ask pastor, why are we always late in our Bible study? And the pastor says, ah, when are we supposed to be closing? He says, it's o'clock. Pastor says, it's 5.55. <laughs> we'll be closing. He says, say, beat the timekeeper from next week, 5.55. Because the people who say, do two hours, there is no tight, no offering. <laughs> they don't even know whether the church closed down or not. The gift of a man makes room for him. And brings him before great men. What is he coming to do before great men? So that they can make decisions together at the gate. When you have means, you have mouth. But before means, if you don't have means, you need wisdom. The Bible says a poor man uses an ent- entry, uses entreaties. A, poor, a rich man talks roughly. A poor man uses entreaties. He uses wisdom. Causes make life hard. Blessing makes life. The blessing makes life easy. When the blessing is released, power surge comes to battle things for you to make life all right. However, where is uh, Psalm 24? So that I can quickly go somewhere. The blessing is an empowerment to prosper predicated on actions of righteousness. Write it down. The blessing is an empowerment to prosper predicated on actions of righteousness or predicated on the premise of actions of righteousness. You cannot Be blessed in abstract. The blessing of God doesn't fall on emptiness. The only blessing that preceded anything that a man ever did or ever would do was the blessing when man was created because he was a mora. That time, it was neither Mora nor Imora. It was Amora. And it was the beginning of God's work, so it just blessed. But in no time, man ruined everything. That's when 
he began to understand that God's love is, uncon is not unconditional. It's conditional. Because if it's unconditional, there was no way me, I can chase my child out of the garden of Eden and put him in the midst of snakes and lions. That's exactly what God did. Only two people in the midst of all the animals. Baboon, chimpanzee, orangutan, <laughs> hippopotamus, different kind of snake, scorpion, cockroach, everything multiplied against Adam and Eve outside. And he now put an angel, a cherub, with flaming sword in the garden to keep it so that they don't come back. Don't ever say that the blessing of God or the, the, the love of God is unconditional. It is not true. Except you can find it for me in the Bible. We can't fathom the depth of his love. Very true. But that is unconditional. Then hell will not exist. The heart is the law from verse 1 and the fullest thereof. The word and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seed and established it upon the floors. Who shall ascend to the hill of the law? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the law and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Do you see that the blessing is predicated on, this is verse 5. Is predicated on first four. He has clean hands, he has pure heart, he has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor swear, nor swear deceitfully. The Bible said, This man shall receive the blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of his salvation. That is the reason why the book of Psalm from first one, chapter one, start with Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinner, nor sit in the seat of discomfort. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and he does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither. Whatever he does prosper. You can see. He starts with blessing. He ends with prosperity. But predicated on certain premises. He does not stand in the counsel of the ungodly. Let, let's see. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor, see, nor stand in the way of sinners. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the word of God. As a result of him being rooted in the word of God. He is instructed how not to live his life like an unbeliever. How not to be a liar. How not to be a deceiver. How not to be a division causer. How not to be a gossip. How not to be a backbiter. As a backbiter you will receive many curses. As a masturbator. Demons will be your friend. Your destiny may be totally lynched. You will be looking for destiny. will not exist. As a truth breaker, somebody who makes peace with people and goes at the back to go and do something else. So that's the reason why Jesus began to. The Bible says he saw multitude and he wanted to release the mysteries of heaven. He, you know, each time Jesus saw multitude, he would have compassion on them. He would be moved because they were like sheep scattered without shepherd. And the Bible says he moved to the mountain and then he called people to himself. Say, let me tell you how to be. You need to be blessed. Your life is stressed. And he said, he started with, blessed are those who are poor in the spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the merciful. For this I receive mercy. Blessed are the meek. For this I inherit the heart. Blessed are the uh, uh, peacemakers. They can be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. He, he talked about a number of the dimensions of blessedness. Which is not the exhaustive list. He continues. Paul took it to another level. The fruit of the spirit. Against which there is no law. He said love. Joy. Peace. Long suffering. Meekness. Uh, uh, patience. Self control. 
talks about all of those. He says against this there is no law. The devil cannot hold you ran- to ransom with all of this. That's why he says in Psalm 24, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness. Another translation says vindication, which is the same thing as justification. Without justification and vindication or vindication or righteousness, God cannot release a blessing. That's why Jesus said, Bless are those who do this. He didn't say, Bless is everybody. All of you, bless is everybody. He said, Bless is everybody. God loves everybody. Oh, everybody is a child of God. Some people even say, All of you are children of God. <laughs> God bless everybody. If God, ah, we like this. Let me tell you to be born again, you need salvation in Christ Jesus, which is to believe. With all of your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And confess with your mouth that is the law. Because with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Romans chapter 11. With mouth confession is made unto salvation. To become a man who truly carries the blessing of God. That you will walk in the path. He will lead in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Psalm 23. He started with the Lord is my shepherd. Some people will stop there. He says I don't want. If if the Lord is your shepherd. Please can you con... Put that Psalm 23 because Psalm 23 led to Psalm 24. Come on. Psalm 23 led to Psalm 24. Let's see it. There is no future for a spiritually lazy or physically lazy child of God. There is no future for you. They ask you fast, you cannot fast. They ask you, don't watch pornography, say, it's so hard, Pastor. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm a child of God that comes to church. I love the Lord with all of my heart. But I can't. I've met a guy before here. He gets involved in musical instrument and whatever. He said, I cannot stop kissing people. Inside my office here. He said, Pastor, he cannot stop. So I was looking for how the Lord will help us take him away. Because <laughs> I don't like anybody disturbing my space. I actually pray people away from this church. The day he told me he got job somewhere, I said, quickly, quickly. I said, don't come around there. I said, quick, 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 quick. The Lord bless and be with you anywhere you want to go. Because one day somebody will buy a car and I will be putting gas inside the car. And you'll be, you'll be licking the lips from the mirror. And the only way not to commit sin is not to be around temptation. Anybody can be tempted. Did you hear what I said? There is nobody among God said that is bigger than temptation. It's a lie. That's why Jesus said, lead, Jesus, the Savior, said, this is the prayer I pray. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. When you are led into temptation, you are already caught in an evil matter. He said you are an evil in the congregation of the people. That's Proverb 9. Because your house is very close to the house of the strange woman. <laughs> he said your path goes away. Once your path goes away, you are not going to be the same again. As I am right now, I know how to manage my spirit. There are places you can't get me to go to. He said, they are doing wedding, pastor, are you going to come? I can come to the church. Even the church, what I'm using my eyes to see, is already, is ready to kill the devil. To now come to the reception. I told Reki and Zainab, when they were following the net to a wedding, Congolese wedding many years ago, you remember? You are here, then, Reki, are we here? <laughs> I want them. They were very powerful Christians. They just got born again. We want to see, we want to see. When he came to the middle of the night, they switched off light. <laughs> you were come on to tap me, oh God. You're my pen. You be bamba. You're my pimpy. I told them, I said, I've gone to Congolese wedding before. I said, this thing took three days. <laughs> I went for Friday. It's only Sunday they release me to, to be back at home. I've never seen, and I only wore clothes. They have brought different kind of clothes that they were changing into. Because Nigeria won. Sir, we just go in the afternoon. By the evening, we have returned. They even give us food back home inside a container. It's, it's, also, both go Nigeria. Everybody go. Because Nigeria is business minded. These people have time for. They, they prepare. They will come from Belgium for, for, for the same party. Nigerian man with Simon is said, uh, uh, my friend, uh, we were supposed to come, but something came up. It didn't come. <laughs> they planned it up. <laughs> and said, we have sent some money to your account. As soon as they go, he said, hey, God, thank you for delivering me. <laughs> and then I went. Come back to the church and come and be sleeping Sunday morning. <laughs> I said, God, catch you. 
Are you listening to what I'm saying? I can't go to where everybody will wrap their body in such a way that even angels cannot enter the hall with me. I don't do all those things to myself. That's why my spirit is pure. He said, if anything is pure, if anything is good, he said, think about this thing. There are things not to think about. I also see a glimpse of some of the things that all of you see. I am scrolling through my, I don't go to Instagram as such. I said, I want to go and like my post. Because I can't leave my post there without being liked. <laughs> I can't bring shame to my own father. <laughs> because some people are bad. They watch what I post and they don't like. I say, see bad people. Like myself. <laughs> So that somebody else will meet it like there. It's not just white, it must be red. red. <laughs> and, uh, but as soon as I scroll and some people are dancing, they are just dancing. I was trying to look what are they what is the music? That's what I'm trying. Then they want to turn their back. Bah! I just go out. They they are ready for the back. They just uh, everyone fancy, everyone fancy. They, they will not be turning, they'll be doing nice like this much more. They are coming for as soon as they want. To, because they put some spirit to you. Actions and words are spirit. That's why it now comes to the time you want to come to the church. You are so weighed down. Spirit are weighing you down. Every communication, whether father or non father is a spiritual exchange. You now wonder why this is a particular year you want to dress. You can be cultured. In the dressing of an alert, just by going through Instagram or TikTok. And there is nothing anybody can say to you in the church that will mean anything. Because the things you have heard and seen, the spirit have entered into you and put glimpses in your eyes. The only thing that suits you is that image that has been painted. Christ is not there. You don't have the image of Christ. They taught you someone to say, flaunt what you have is the property God gave you. Flaunt it. You don't look for better way of wrapping but You now go there are, and they, there, there are many clothes that the ideas of the way they design them is directly from the pit of hell. Tell me it's a lie. They have bomb sort where they have cut it in such a way that you can see the pant. Some don't even wear pants. You can see the biological properties. <laughs> To prepare you for eschatological exit. <laughs> I don't watch. I know where I came from. So I don't watch. And you cannot dress nonsense in front of me as I'm preaching. I'm making me uncomfortable in my uh, preaching service. You go to some churches, you, you'll be seeing yellow, yellowish things <laughs> on the chest. And the pastor now say, "You're good, my sister. You are not good. Not here. <laughs> you're actually not good. You are bad. Because men are moved by visual impressions. I said they need to take their eyes off. They they don't know how to take it off. As a matter of fact, some of us don't. We don't look. We already see. Why we look not at the things which are seen? So we already see, but we just don't look. But some people don't have enough power. <laughs> they have to look." And they commit lucre. And they now get home, they can't sleep. You now come for prayer and then how can they join prayer with what they have finished watching? I said, rah, bah, 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 bah. the tongue cannot come out. The tongue just goes into the inner recesses of the heart and stays there. What they have seen is what is they are not sleeping. All the only visions and revelations you have seen are those. God, the blessing of God cannot come on unrighteousness. Righteousness exhorts a nation. Sin is a reproach. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 9. Because you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore the Lord thy God has anointed with the oil of gladness above your fellow. Anointed with the oil of gladness above your fellow. Anointed with the oil of gladness above your fellow. Anointed with the oil of gladness above your fellow. Let's read this place. And I close with it. So that we can pray. Matthew 25. Verses 31 to 46. Matthew 25. Seek for the blessing of the Lord. It will make your life easy. Matthew 
You will not look like somebody who knows how to do it. No, it is the blessing of God that has declared you right to deserve that thing. Did we share on our Facebook to people? Or it is when we want to share that you, are, you don't use Facebook. You don't want them to know you are in the church. Every other time, from time to time, you go and be pee <laughs> To see what is going on there, you want to catch up. Then when we go to the church, I don't use Facebook. But one day they will bring out the register of those who go to Facebook as anonymous. And your name will come out. Matthew 25 from verse 20, 31 to 46. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and not, I want you to follow me. Please stop that thing now. Or is it not enough? And in 10 minutes, do it again. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and the holy angels with him, he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. Hmm? And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd defied a sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep in his right hand, but the goat on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Are you following me? Come, ye blessed of my father. To inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Go on. For I was hungered. How did they become blessed? I was hungered. And you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then said the righteous answered him. Saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took you thee or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my, of my brethren, you have done it unto me. Can you see? Come ye blessed of my father into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. What made them blessed? Every single person that comes around you, you find fault why you will not be able to help them. That is the reason why in the times of your need, you'll be very helpless. You think Jesus just said, blessed are the merciful, for this are the saints that obtain mercy. Put it on the reverse gear. Cursed are the merciless, they will not receive any mercy. See now. I was hungry, you fed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was homeless, you put me in your house. Nobody wanted to touch me with the longest pole. You came near me. I was an angry madman. Nobody was ready to be my friend. You received power from me to be my friend. Until I calmed down. See, God is not going to bless you based on prayer. He's going to bless you based on prayer. He will bring people around you that will give you prayer. If you don't like difficulties, forget about the blessings. Everything mentioned here was a point of difficulty. Probably this guy only had one meal and he shared it with the man that was hungry. Everybody who is always focused on their life alone cannot receive the blessing of the Lord. Oh, sorry, 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 honey. You know, we just bought a new car 
and it's 2023 20, spec, and you know how much we spent on that car. Anytime we pick that girl, when we used to use the other car, the car smells. And this is a car of 200,000. We can't actually pee it. Or when people are entering the car, you are, you are immediately telling them, please, uh, uh, clean your legs. No! Let them bring the legs like that into the car. Let them see it by themselves. They will be changing by themselves when they see. When they finish, go and clean it. Car is a tool. Don't say, in this house, don't just put, and put, the, put in the toilet like that. The way you are even doing your mouth. God sees you have made yourself a landlord. And the hurt is the Lord and the fullness thereof. I told my wife several times, we do not have a house that God has given to us. We have a house of God that is in our care. There is a difference. Some of you say, that's the husband God has given to me. Where is the one? Hmm. God forbid sickness. You yourself will now hate the husband. You'll be looking for another boyfriend while the husband is still alive. I've seen many things like that. You go and meet people and say, why did you greet my wife the way you greet my wife? I saw the way you were looking at my wife. They were going to look at your wife. Except she's ugly. They look at the wife of Abraham. He did not find them. At age 90, they, was, they even kept her in the house. He didn't say, fire! Rain! <laughs> How many people will you fight on the road for looking at your wife? I've been with a big man of God and my wife and I was there and the guy, the, the man cast eyes on the legs of my wife and the eyes of both him and me met and became four. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> He's a man. Why can't he look? The respect for him did not reduce one bit. It did not reduce one bit. Let me get in this. The respect for him did not reduce one bit. Don't be possessive of anything that God gives you. Because that is the first thing the devil will tell you. You just got a new house. You just, I just want to enjoy myself. Even just for two weeks. But as soon as you got the house, that is when they say, somebody, hello, say now. Somebody is coming to see me. I want the person to be in your house for one day. Say, oh, Joshua. <laughs> that, uh, Jesus will not want, Jesus will not want, it is the greatest test. That test may be for a promotion that is due in four years. When we were moving from Moikulin, they just gave us quick notice from our house. They asked us to move by August or by September, by July. And they gave us the quick notice by May. When we were praying, it came to my heart that number one, Father, I will increase my giving. Because moving from, I said I need a house in the city, not in the village anymore. It will reduce my expenses by about 30,400 euro per annum. So I told God how much I will increase my title on a weekly basis. And I told my wife that we are going to tell God that the house we need is the house where he will be bringing us disciples to trade. Don't forget we are four. And we have two rooms. Where do you train disciples? We just moved in in July. It didn't end. This one was, Zenab was on the train from Port Lease without telling anybody. And just called me on the train. How are you, Pastor? I'm coming to Galway. I was still wondering if I could stay over your house. I said, Come, ye bless of the Lord, <laughs> into the place prepared for you by the Heavenly Father from the foundation of the earth. See, just start living there. I used to wash a cloth for her. One night! After Senab has left, and I told her what I do to you, God will be expecting you to do it. She moved into a house one month. Somebody was coming from Portland. I said, Let the Zenab. They said, Somebody is coming. This is your own chance. The person lived with you. You have not enjoyed the bed. You just bought everything. Just, just, I, said, I said, Life is just started. Senab <laughs> moved. Reki came back. 
One night I was rolling from one end of the bed. That, this is the truth before God. From one end of the bed to another. I didn't know the reason. In the middle of the night around 2.30 a.m. Whether Senab or Reki, one of them called me. There was a pandemonium in Senab's house. January 2017. And God said, that's the reason why you have been rolling. And he said, they are calling police for Reki. You see, that one man wearing nika. Suddenly, you are forgetting all these things. Ah. <laughs> because you can be forgetting. Because all of you, your life is comfortable now. You, you can forget the day of you too. <laughs> because I know what God was dealing with me. And God said, it is time to bring her into your house. I, said, I have put her in the car without telling my wife. We were at the Gada station. This Gada station in front of GMIT. When I call my wife, can you pick all the cloth of the children from the room? Reki is coming to be living with us. We met her picking the cloth out. If you see what we call our house, if you see what we call house, if you see this space, no store, no nothing. All our cloth can be hanging anywhere I want to. Have. But yet, that is the way people are going to be coming there. If God does not like it, he can give us my bedroom. I don't know how to live in a house without people, only my wife and children. It doesn't look sweet. It's not exciting. I don't know how to do it. I can't live. At, and I don't have key. If you live in a house, you just enter. When I want to top it up, when my daughter came in Buku, I've even agreed before I told my wife. The parents were even telling me, so how much will a house be in God? I say, for what now? He said, so that when she comes, I say, so where is my own house? <laughs> I said, my daughter is coming to my house. <laughs> and I told my wife, I said, I didn't bring her for correction. I just need you to know. I bring her for love. What did I say I bring her for? The mom will ask me something. So, is somebody not going to be correcting her anymore? I say, leave that for me. I will, when I think the correction is needed. <laughs> it's what God told me. It's what God told me that will work. And I told her, you are not here as a stranger. It is where God gave to all of us together. Enjoy your life. I don't know which test that is for. It may be for, it may be the test of a 10,000 seat auditorium. God will be testing you for something. He will go through another dimension. Many people who are poor today, they failed their test yesterday. Write it down. Many people who are struggling today, they failed their test yesterday. Many people whose lives are not coherent today, whose lives are not coherent today, see, there is no way in Christ Jesus you can be a struggler without a reason. Because the part of the justice has a sunny light that sunny more and more to the perfect day. Watch it. The way of the transgressor is hard. If your life is hard, there's a transgressor somewhere. There is no way our children can ever be houseless, homeless, or stranded anywhere they go around the world. It is not possible. Forever. It is never possible. And there is no way I can turn to anywhere around the world that I can be homeless for one hour. For the, up, for the upright, for the righteous, there arises light in the dark. God told the children of Israel, the reason why I allow you to be in Egypt for these years as strangers is that I want you to know how to take care of strangers. He said, the land you are going, you are going to have strangers there, you must take care of them. And the blessing will come as you clothe the naked. As you feed the hungry. You visit the people in the prison. The people in the hospital. People who are in need of one thing or the other. You deliberately put yourself in line. There is nothing God wants you to do that will be convenient for you. God didn't ask you to do it. If it is convenient for you, it is not a cross. The only thing that is convenient for us is the reward, the crown. Because it's not crown of thorns. <laughs> that of Jesus. He wore crown of thorns. They were now using stick. 
to drive it into his head. It's just this last week that I saw it as I was reading it. They said they were using reed to knock his head. So that the, the tongue can actually enter very well. The, it can sit very well as a crown fitting the head so that blood can <laughs> pop in out. Those people. <laughs> but in no time, in less, than, in less than four days, he had become the king of kings and the lord of laws. Think about that. I used to think about it a lot. His suffering and death and everything, just about five days. And everything was over. And forever, if he blinks like this, devil will move six million miles. He just do like this. He just look at the devil. Hey, hey! I don't know the next thing. <laughs> there is a time God has given you authority that you can never lose job anymore. It will be from one great job to another. There's a way God has given you authority which we call the blessing, which is the investment of heaven over your life, which is the endorsement of God over your life. He has given you a blessing over a, the marital issue. You can never have marital problem. In the book of Jeremiah also, he said, oh heart, oh heart, oh heart, hear the word of the Lord. Write this man childless. That man can never have marital peace. God said, write him childless. He told her, oh heart, oh heart, oh heart, hear the word of the Lord. Write this man childless. A man that shall not prosper in all his days. He wrote him childless. He made him non-prospering. Let me check it in the Bible over there. Oh heart, oh heart, hear the word of the Lord. People like Pastor Deboye, God just opened the heavens and said, the crowd that will be following you, you will not be able to number it. That's why he speaks the way he speaks. If he comes to this country, he has more salvation among white than any white person among themselves. And he speaks Nigerian English, not Queen's English. Somebody shout, hallelujah. What is it? Who wants to give his life to Jesus? I see Irish people running to the front. KJ, 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 KJ. KJ, you're blessed in Jesus' name. Say amen. Amen. Bravo. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying? Say yes. <laughs> all the food. Yes. 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 Because God is standing with him like a mighty, terrible one. And all his enemies have been defeated. That's why measure your battle before you start it. If your battle is against a blessed man, calm yourself down. I was talking to one of my daughters. I can't help you do anything with your parents. Because they stand before God. With global relevance. I said, never, I said, I've never raised one prayer point before. Never. I will never. Nobody can, even at another, you can. <laughs> it's a lost battle for me to be. No. Find a way to have peace and wisdom <laughs> to justify you. He said, by knowledge, I'll just be delivered. And you listen to what I'm saying, but I will raise a finger. Never. Everything will go smoothly. <laughs> Whatever requirement they ask the other person to go, he must go through it. And we are not going to help. <laughs> even if they take him to Nigeria. Say bye. When he comes back, say welcome. <laughs> if they ask people must come and prostrate, he say, carry all your friends. <laughs> if they say bring ten thousand, go and give them. Say, help me beg pastor. I say, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying? You can't by the time you have gotten to this point where they say, Hold out, all heart, hear the word of the Lord. Yes, go on. Just said the Lord, write this man childless. God was talking to the heart. A man that shall not prosper in his days. For no, no, no man of his seed shall prosper. Sitting upon the throne of David and ruling anymore in Judah. And you see. And many of these things have been proclaimed in the spirit realm many times without you knowing. Because in that uh, Matthew 25. No, is it Matthew 24? 25. They say, when did we do this? And we did not know. You know there is a reverse part of it for the wicked also. That you saw me naked. You even left me like that. You even made me more naked. They said we didn't know. 
But the activities around your life will tell you whether you are under the blessing or otherwise. The activities around your life. Watch the activities around your life before you start blaming people. I don't like what they do in that church. I'm not moving forward. You can't move forward because the, pri- the, the private deals, your secret deals, can, the insta- you are an insta blog consumer. The thing you consume. They are already against God, against the Holy Spirit, against Jesus. You have sent out the Holy Spirit before you came. You just came as an effigy. You were very empty. There is no space for the word of God to sit on. The word they had could not profit them. Because it did not mingle with faith in them. You need faith for the world to profit you. So many of the people that are prospering among God say it's because they have faith. And as I'm releasing the word, as we're releasing the word, it mixes it with faith. Hebrews chapter 4. And it profit them. You cannot profit from the word of God if not missing with faith. Sit down with your life before your life is a tomatoes one. Sit down. If you see anybody making progress and sometimes they talk about the progress that they make. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Anybody's testimony is prophesying to you what God can do. I just shared with you the testimony of Ebuwa. How did it happen? Under three months that you are not doing any casual job, you are not doing any mania job, you are not doing anything that makes you sweat and immediately you are plunged into the profession for which you came. And you have not even obtained the lances. How did he, what, how do you live your life? And you can, have, you can see already how he lives his life. He comes from Noknakara. Enter his boss. He comes in the morning for money prayer. 7 a.m. Some of you, your house is very close by. It doesn't make any sense to you. He comes. Sometime when he comes, he only meets 30 minutes. And with joy, he's going. I have not given him 5 euros since he came. Five euros I've not given him. I've never I've not taken him to my house. I've only brought peanuts and gary inside the office here. Ellen the morning. I say, Come, let us drink. <laughs> and after we drink, I say bye. <laughs> and I call him from time to time. How are you eyes? Everything. Bye. And I've not had story. I've had story of people who say, You don't call us until the day of the service. I've never called him for service. Talk up and do what? <laughs> I only gave him one job. He's a medical doctor. He's 37 years old, older than many of us. I gave him one job. Almost like a pastor, where he's coming from. He has never come to the pulpit. He has never handled the microphone. He's not going to handle it for a good while. I gave him job of battery. I said, My battery must not run out. When you come here, I say, Plug battery and stay there. That's the job. Does, do you see him doing it or not? That is his job is battery. He's a surgeon that has worked in a number of hospitals in Nigeria. He's a frontline doctor in Nigeria, well established. All of them come to do masters here because they want to move abroad, not because they need the they need education, they've obtained all the education they need. Some of them have done three masters in Nigeria before they say they want to do masters here. And if the government asks them how many masters have you done, say, I did my undergraduate. <laughs> Battery is his job, and I'm watching him. Battery, and he has done the workers' training, and he's there. Some people they are too big for workers' training, too big for it. So, watch his trajectory to know what is forming the narrative. Don't just get angry. You want to know how do I preach, and I'm able to exact authority? Come and see my life. Come and see what I think about. Sit down with me. You will know what is forming my narrative. Not just say I tap the anointing. Are you into a tap ministry? Be in the I learn ministry. Learn. Sometimes it's communicated more through learning than through tapping. He cast out demons with his words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Check people's lives. Some of my friends are married. I'm not married. Let me know what is their art. How do they think? I have younger people that have prospered more than me in the ministry. They only started ministry 2016. 
Some of them 2004. I've been in ministry since 1992. I have not prospered one over 100 of the way they prosper. If you see the way I hit what they preach, I share them with you. They are my younger ones. People like Oropo, people like Sema, very younger to me, 40 years old, whatever. They are bigger than all of you. They are my younger ones, whether in the faith or whatever. But the way I line up to hear what God is saying through them, because God has approved them to the nations. I talk from time to time with, what's the name? Arume. We exchange texts. I have his number. The things that are coming out of this guy and the secret of men is in their story. If you listen well enough to their story, you will, you will know their secret. Me, I'm even preaching here. You don't even go back to go and watch. And you want to be a tangible pastor in this land. I don't say you want to be a pastor in Nigeria. I am here. One of the people God has given the land to here. That is getting some little reason. You see that you yourself, you did house fellowship. It did not work. <laughs> So don't let your head be too swollen and say you, you are the Michael Oropo of Ireland. <laughs> because you are not. <laughs> so many of the house fellowship leaders told me, Pastor, I don't want to do anymore. Say remove my name. I say, why? <laughs> you see that people were not responding to you. So you now say, how do people respond to the Bible study prayer meeting? Somebody say, he's forcing people. Go and force people yourself also. First people in the choir. First people in the prayer meeting. First people. Ibuku told me, I write many things in the, the power of sister. Only one person is responding. I say, welcome to the ministry life. <laughs> I say, that's the way only one person responds. That's the way. Some people will even believe, behave as if they didn't see the... And I say, oh, did they post? After three weeks, they did they post? Oh, sorry. I was so busy. Ask them what are they put. They have seen everything on Instagram. And yet the WhatsApp message that is important, they wouldn't, they can even say, I didn't get to my WhatsApp. Huh? Or they say, I don't really use my phone. Huh? And you are telling all these lies in the full glare of God. God looking at you. My phone, look at where it is. This is art here. This is my phone. <laughs> they are sad by sad. <laughs> If you see the way. A buku caresses the phone. She, she will take tissue paper of water several times. She, she, she will clean the face of the phone. The phone is the, is the neatest place on earth. And if a buku is talking to the computer, the computer is actually on the la- They actually have time to get a fellowship. The computer is the husband of a buku. And if you call a buku, she say, yes, sir. Uh, where is he lying down with computer like this? Yes. Uh, by the time she will put her face up, she's smiling. <laughs> eh? From the conversations she's having with computer. <laughs> Deep communication time. And I said, Ibukun, I talked, I text you. Did you see it? Uh, sorry, I didn't see. Where's your phone? My phone is away from me on the same bed. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Learn the trajectory that is forming the narrative of those that you think their result you may like. Eventually, put me some 23 that I asked you to put me before. Are you there? The Lord is my shepherd, as I not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. No, who doesn't like that one? He restore my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, before you will go to... Let, let go there. Go, keep going. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have endorsed me. Even if I go through anything, I'll be unscattered. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my comes run over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If he does not lead you in the path of righteousness, you can't get to this point. The blessing is an empowerment to prosper, predicated on the premise of actions of righteousness. No, welcome. <laughs> Are you listening? Predicated on the premise of actions of righteousness. Actions of righteousness. You are directed to them by your delight, by your exchanges with the word of God. His delight is in the law of the Lord. So, let now finish this thing. You cannot be righteous except you are instructed. You cannot be instructed except you are reading the word of God. You can, he leads me in the path of, he has to lead you. And he has to not lead you through temptation. There is no way you will not fall if you are led through temptation. If you are led through, lead us not in the way, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Evil is coming when temptation multiplies around you. When Jesus saw that temptation was going to come, he went to go and die inside with Dennis. <laughs> he, he died so that temptation does not have sugar to, to lynch upon those that were no cancerous growth. He alkalized his body totally. Except the lead, he orders your steps. One girl was asking the girl, why is it that I learned that you have kissed so many people? He said, he said, Pastor, don't mind them, you know. So many people are just on my face, maybe my place of work, or sometimes I go clubbing, they're just on my face, and they're not going to go away except you kiss them. Some of you will find it very hilarious and very stupid, some of the things you have done before, but because you are caught in a particular place, Sometimes when you look back on them and say, how did I? How? There are some people you don't want your name to be mentioned with their names. You regret that you ever came across their path. You are led. You are instructed in the ways of righteousness. But you cannot be instructed in the way of righteousness if your Bible is closed. Give me that scripture, Second Timothy something. You see chapter 3. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable. Let's quickly see it. All scripture. That's Second Timothy 3. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Can you see? For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Stay there. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Again, go down. That the man of God or a child of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You can't be righteous except you are instructed. You can't be instructed except you are reading the word of God. Let me tell you what I mean. Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, are come. Is that not John 16 for 6? He said, I guide you into all the truth. What is all the truth? He's talking about the scripture. Now, look at it now. Look at the way I live my life. I'll use myself as an example. I used to be a very irritated and angry person. And it took a sizable person of my life away. And ladies and gentlemen, can I be sincere with you? I never minded whatever anger or irritation took away. If I was angry with somebody 79 years ago, today I'm still angry. As a matter of fact, some of you have more delight in stealing money or you having money or you've been in the complaint of a gay. I delighted more in being in the complaint of anger. 
anger can talk. Speaks English to me, composes. As a matter of fact, every morning I'm waking up, prepare to battle the object of my anger. I'm ready. And I'm happy because my own anger is like this. It takes on right. I don't hurt people. You can't say I just deliberately hurt you. And if I hurt you, I'm going to say sorry. I have always loved human beings. And I still love them. From young age, even as a non-believer, I like rights. I like justice. I like fairness. And I will warn people. You are doing like this to me. I don't like. I will warn people. But when I turn. I'll tell you. Don't do like this. Don't win this place. Don't do this thing. I will even be watching it. Don't do it. If one day. I can carry the whole week. And pour on your bed. I make sure I pour it. It's not something for one minute. For two minutes. I can do it for two hours. And you still talk, and I'm still talking. The, the thing does not go down because I prepare for it. And after that one, ladies and gentlemen, I still pray and read the Bible. With joy. <laughs> With Jesus' joy. With my heart, like, even if the Holy Ghost comes to me and say, are you okay? I say, yes. <laughs> and I've met people also that they could be angry, and they say they have peace. <laughs> So I know that I met my mate. <laughs> there are some of us who are from that clan. We, I will lift up my hands. I will still worship God. I will worship you forever. But I just discovered that my life was not moving forward in many areas of life. So God revealed it to me. I said, ah. And I now discover anger reside in the bosom of a fool. And the Bible says shame will be the promotion of food. I was getting a lot of shame in certain key areas of life. Shame, shame, shame upon shame. I would tell God, I say, but this is shameful. I didn't know the root. But as I read the word of God, and I say, okay, this is what to deal with. So now when you get me angry, I was teaching some of our pastors recently. I was talking with them on personal notes. I said, this is what I do. Somebody gets me angry now. I look at the person, I look at Jesus in the person. That's number one. Number two, and I ask Jesus inside them, what do you want? <laughs> Jesus can now say, sing praises to me or go and buy me food. <laughs> That's why I do opposite to people what they have done to me. It makes me foolish. But gaining ground in the spirit realm. Without the word of God, I will argue with Jesus forever. That is not right. He told me, You are not paid for the respect given give to you. You are paid for the disrespect you get from people. Just imagine. Jesus is not paid for the miracles he did, he's paid for the sufferings he went through. The miracles he did them were not for me. Me? No, I was not blind. <laughs> I was not a leper. I was not crippled. He did it for his own people. <laughs> but the death he died, I, it was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. By his stripes, I was healed. Today, you bought me a mot and a loaf of bread. I even saw the loaf of bread in your honor. I said, where are you coming from? I wanted to take it back. Say, I brought it for you. I am not rewarded for what you came to give me. My reward was, was the time that you ever brutalized me and I took it on the chain. And you're still retaining the faith. Your reward comes from your test, not from your testimony. But only by reading the scripture you can be prepared for all this. Instruction in righteousness is in the scripture. Some people did something against us in the recent time. I prepare both notes. I've even written some things on the Facebook that I wanted to reply on. What I've prepared many things. I prepared pages. Then I began to ask the Lord, and the Lord said, So you want me or you want yourself? I say it's you. He says, so go through the scripture how these things will be resolved. 
My mind didn't like it. My spirit agreed with it. Many, many people, because they are not instructed in the scripture, that's the reason why they have had a divorce in their home. And they always write, I don't know, a man slapped me, a man did not care for me during my pregnancy, a man whatever, whatever. Only one scripture will deliver you. A wise woman builds her own house. If that scripture only is in you, the Holy Spirit can use it forever. And one day the husband will handle the microphone and say, I just want to thank God for my wife. And the devil used to use me a lot. Until God encountered me. I slapped her, I did everything. And nobody ever had in the church. Because this woman was almost defending the man. The man now became a preacher. Some of you will go to the Facebook and say, what do you think about a Christian man that slapped his wife? Everybody knows this. You say, I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> Some people, there is their face. They will not come to church that day. Or if they come to the church, their face is like this. He said, Pastor, don't worry. He said, what happened to you? Said, Pastor, don't worry. The wisdom of a man make his face to shine. To, to shine. And the appearance of his countenance will change. That's what wisdom does. You can be going through the more gruesome bout of your life and people cannot read it on your face. Because Jesus said when you are fasting, he mean when you are going through trouble. He said, put oil on your head and your face. Don't let anybody see. He said, don't behave like others to make people see that you are fasting. Not that you are hiding, but you are practicing the scripture. And on the basis of that, and you spread peace, you don't spread trouble. Jesus said, blessed are you because you'll be called the children of God. And when you, when God now qualifies you as a child of God, healing is children bread. If sickness is coming to you, heal it. There are so many other things also that God does for his own children. That means there are children of God and there are children of God. That's what Jesus was saying there. Blessed are the peacemakers. Somebody is always causing trouble. God said, they, we cannot call you a child of God. Everybody must please you. He said, blessed are the meek that I inherit the heart. Have, how do we know a meek person? Somebody who keeps his power in check. Somebody who keeps his right under. You have right, you keep it under. Your power is kept in check. Don't talk to me like that. If everything people say, don't talk to me like that as a Christian, you will never grow. You will never amount to anything in Christendom. Because for, we, for us to know that you are patient, they must do something to you that will make you rowdy and in the midst of it. For us to know you are peaceful, you must be in the midst of troubles. You can't show us peace in the midst of peace. You can't show me light in the midst of light. You need darkness to show you light. Let your light so shine. Among men, those that may see your good work and glorify you. Because everywhere is darkened. Then you now bring light. Everywhere is troublesome. You now bring peace. Blessed are the pure in heart. Not just pure in words. Your heart is pure towards others. You are not looking for their downfall. You are not looking for a way to rise and they come down. Your heart is being watched. The eyes of the Lord run to fro. Looking for whose heart is upright so that he may make himself strong in their behalf. Think about that. When I laugh with you and I say I love you, I mean it. From the depth of my heart. When I rejoice with you over your testimony, I mean it. From the depth of my heart. When you rejoice with people over their testimony, it's a matter of time. Your own testimony will knock on the door. But some people, it's this. When somebody has testimony, they say, I never had testimony. They never come in forward to see a testimony. When will you ever have? Because you never, with all of your heart, rejoice with those who are rejoicing. You always find fault in the rejoicing of people. And even when they are crying, you now find reason why they need to cry. <laughs> because if they don't cry, what they did, they will not understand. 
He said, cry with them. He didn't say, judge them in their cry. Amen. 